Welcome to a noob's guide to Valkia the Bloody. This is Valkia the Bloody. I said bloody, not lightly sanguinated. Getting there? Yeah, that's the way Korn likes it. Valkia is a playable legendary lord in the Champions of Chaos DLC for Total War Warhammer 3. In this video, we'll go over her lore, how that's been translated to gameplay, and show you how Valkia can help get rid of that extra water weight you've been holding on to. Norskin legend tells of a woman whose cruelty was only matched by her beauty, whose skill at arms attracted the eyes of Korn himself. She died, then was raised again to find the world's greatest champions for the Blood God's army. Valkia was once the fell queen of the Schwarzwolf tribe, and a firm follower of the Chaos God Korn. But if you want to impress a god of war, it's not enough just to lead. You have to make people bleed. So Valkia got Korn's attention by cutting off the heads of anyone she defeated in battle, or anyone that challenged her rule, or generally just anyone that looked at her crosswise or didn't use their blinkers when turning. Her barbaric strength subdued the neighboring tribes, who immediately rolled over when she took their faction capitals. If the Norskin chieftains were embarrassed about getting their backsides handed to them by a girl, they kept it to themselves, as being vassalized by Valkia meant they gained the frenzy attribute and helped spread Korn's influence across the world. One tribe was so pleased at being spared, they even gifted her the barbed spear Slopnir, with a rune of corn carved into its silvery blade that let her Ginzu slice and dice anyone in her path. But when you're a woman in power, your road to the top is paved with assholes. Losifax, a demon prince of Slanesh, descended from his corner office to leer at Valkia and explain how she was far better suited to be a slave girl than a monarch. If she would just dress a little nicer and put on some makeup, she could attract a nice god's attention, lickety-split, and just give up this whole warrior thing. And while he was certain she was good with a spear, he was much more interested in seeing her work his shaft as a concubine. So she stabbed him, and then stabbed him again flying into a berserker rage that kept stabbing him for two full days. Losifax was only the latest in a never-ending conga line of presumptuous suitors. Valkia needed a way out, so like the Virgin Queen Elizabeth, she pledged her chastity to an amorphous being of infinite power, then swore she'd laid the demon's head at Korn's feet as a bridal gift in exchange. Normally, demon princes dematerialize back into the realm of chaos when defeated, but Losifax was so into the idea of getting nailed by Valkia, he stuck around just to see this play out. Valkia was one of the few mortals to ever beat a demon prince in fair combat, so after that, Korn's eyes were always on her. Whether she was winning great battles, taking a bath, killing champions of chaos, Korn was always watching. So she led a thousand warriors north into the chaos wastes to lay low Losifax's head at the foot of his throne. She noticed that anyone around her fought harder and was less likely to run away because they knew Korn was also looking in their general direction too. They fought trolls, beastmen, and any fugly thing the warp could throw at them, but like a sore dick, they just couldn't be beat. And Valkia's unbridled rage left Korn's armor dented from excitement. Yet with every encounter, more of her people slinked away like cowards back to the safety of home. Until, when she finally stood at the gate to Korn's realm, only one remained. Cormac. He pledged to follow her to the gates of oblivion. Which is where they were. So he died. And so did Valkia. To be fair, Losifax had set up a last-second Slaneshi ambush, and his people attacked with all the speed and flailing genitalia they were known for. Korn had seen it all, and he was pissed. It was hardly a fair fight. Valkyo was almost there, and then Slanesh cock-blocked her at the finish line. So Korn picked Valkyo up, grabbed her soul, and just pushed that genie right back into the bottle, taking the opportunity to reshape Valkyo into an even more terrifying form by adding wings, cloven hooves, and two horns that were ribbed for his pleasure. Yet, in her brief time in the realms of chaos, Valkia had seen the horrifying truth. For ostensibly being the most powerful god of chaos, Korn was incredibly bad at recruiting new champions. Valkia had expected a god of war, and instead found a millennia-old man-child who threw tantrums at the slightest provocation. 
Like most confirmed bachelors, Korn lived awash in a sea of filth. Blood and skulls piled to the ceiling in every room with no record of who had claimed him or how they even got there. I mean, it's fine to say Korn doesn't care from whence the blood flows, but if you're counting paper cuts and nosebleeds, you could wind up with an army that seriously lacks qualifications. Valkia intended to change that, seeking out the best champions and leading them to glory until they were ready for permanent service in Korn's army. And she knew just where to start. Cormac had simped for her so hard, he'd followed her to his death, so she resurrected him as a champion of Korn to simp some more. And I know, a Valkyrie named Valkia who chooses the worthy for an eternal battle in Chaos Valhalla. It's not exactly a subtle nod to Norse myth, but at least Valkia carries on a millennia-long tradition of shield maidens and female warriors from prehistory, a sentence you will find no end of people arguing against on the internet. Because when they find a lady buried in the ground with a shield and a spear, she must have been a baker, much like how Achilles and his best pal Patroclus were just really close friends. When playing as Valkia, you'll recruit basic Chaos Marauders at a higher rank, and train them to ascend the champion's ladder even faster than your manager's nephew could manage. Well, maybe not that fast, but alongside her bloodletting ability, it means that each time your army wins a battle, they will level faster. Each time she wins, you'll even get a bit of extra movement range to keep the chum train rolling. Now, most tribes just drop to their knees when they meet her, rather than risk Valkia's wrath and any that don't kneel fast enough won't make it very far, as Valkia also gains extra movement range if they try and retreat from battle, as Valkia won't suffer cowards to live. That's why she used her second life to revisit her old Schwarzwolf tribe and challenged them to single combat. Her versus every single one of them at the same time. It was like tomatoes trying to fight a blender, so she added vodka, celery, and then literally drank them after. Valkia can't be beaten, won't be reasoned with, and while she can be killed, it won't exactly stop her. She's too useful for Korn to let stay dead for very long. At least at the game's start, though, she's not a demon prince. Why would she need to be when she's already effectively a mortal? If her lack of demonhood is confusing to you, though, you've likely read Valkia's novel. It's no wonder Games Workshop calls it their black library. Imagine what dark pact the writer must have made to expand this scant material into a full book. So what if it contradicts the army book by calling her a demon princess? I mean, even basic stuff like, should she have hair, has become a multi-page argument online because of these inconsistencies. The Creative Assembly hedged their bets by letting Valkia go demon princess at the end of her unique skill line, becoming the Sword Maiden of Corn, which grants her more authority, all the perks of being a demon, and Gore Feast, which lets her heal while in melee combat. Because Valkia may look like an escaped bat child, but G.I. Jane here is no joke. You don't earn a nickname like the Gore Queen without making a vent horizon levels of chili con carnage. So long as Valkia keeps the blood and souls flowing, she can depend on chaos gifts of corn to keep her slappy and happy, which lets you choose between units and blessings from corn, 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 and corn. Speaking of gifts, thanks to Losifax's little ambush stunt, Korn permanently bound the demon to Valkia's shield, forcing him to face tank for her for eternity. With a Slaneshi demon always stuck to her, she's harder to ambush a second time and can even become invulnerable for short periods. Also, if anyone tries to cast magic around her, they'll explode. Put it all together with her unique scarlet armor and you've got a flying, shielded, anti-large, armor-piercing melee hero with high armor who ascends to new heights of tankaliciousness. You want a lady that kicks ass and takes names? You found her. She once sacked a dwarf hold, then blood-eagled anyone that survived, as nothing drains the enemy's will to fight like ritualistically severing their ribs and then draping their lungs across their backs. So decide which worms will become the next great warriors of corn, and build an army to settle the great game once and for all. It's time you played a warrior too angry to stay dead and too powerful to let live. Because this has been a noob's guide to Valkia the Bloody. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Or if you want to vote on which video comes next in this series, consider joining our Patreon. But regardless, thanks for watching.